Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now this video will show you how to install LED strip onto your furniture. With me, I'm using my food storage for example. On the left, this is the condition without LED strip. And on the right hand side, when I switch it on, the LED strip, it is so much better. I wish I should have done it earlier, right? Now, um, to start off with, you must of course uh, stick your LED strip onto your cabinet and then you cut along the line. It's indicated onto your LED strip. My one here is a LED strip that comes with weather shield. So I'm going to remove the weather shield so that I will be able to expose the copper terminal. This is where the wire will connect later. And then I'm going to use a quick connector to connect it so that I do not need to solder it. It's so much better that way. It takes some time to actually remove the polymer, the resin, stick onto this uh, LED strip. And uh, when when you buy any LED strip, make sure you get those that comes with double-sided tape so that you do not need to buy uh, um, double-sided tape to stick your LED strip onto your furniture. So it comes with LED strip and I will stick it there, you cut it, remove the weather shield, expose the uh, copper terminal. Then next would be the uh, quick connector, LED strip quick connector. Connect it accordingly and then with the wire, switch on and unfortunately it doesn't work. This I don't know why it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. So it leaves me no choice but to resolve to the convention method. I solder the wire directly onto the strip and use a hot string sleeve to actually insulate the terminal. To protect the terminal and then I uh, use a hair dryer to actually uh, shrink the sleeve. I mean the sleeve will actually shrink once it comes in contact into uh, hot air so that we're able to provide that insulation. Um, yeah, we will apply hot air for three to five minutes, roughly three minutes, so that it provides a good insulation. Then next, I test it out, switch on the main, and yes, it works now. Finally, it works. So the unfortunately, the quick connector that I the chase does not work with my LED strip, so you always need to have a backup plan in case when the LED connector doesn't work, quick connector doesn't work, then you need to solder them. The next would be the switch. I need to install the switch underneath it, but before that I must install a spacer. I have to mount it onto the cabinet. Oh, oh my goodness, it breaks. So I need to show you how to make my uh, spacer because I use a piece of hard wood. Um, I believe my driving hole is too small, it's supposed to be 1mm smaller than the screw size. So I'll find out the length that I need and then use a jigsaw to cut it out. And uh, yeah, that's the line. You may look at my previous video, how do I cut lines, a straight line using a jigsaw. And then I'll sand it off using a sandpaper, grid, 220 grit sandpaper to round off the edges. Follow, uh, I mean, a 220 grade uh, sandpaper, which I mentioned earlier. Next would be to make a marking so that I'll know where to mark. I mean, where to mount my switch. Okay, I've made one hole earlier, a driving hole earlier. Next, I need to make a marking and then make sure my drill bit is one mm smaller than the screw. Gently, it's going to be loud. Yes, make a driving hole. And then another driving hole for the mounting. Yes, I used the template from the previous one, the, the crack one, and I've made a driving hole, M3 driving hole, and apply double-sided tape and stick it onto into place. I stick it into place, and I'm using an M4 nut, and this time it works. Okay, finally, it doesn't break. So moral value of story is driving hole has to be one mm smaller, and then uh, I apply a insulator tape so that it will prevent any short circuit between the switch, and then time to mount the switch onto the spacer. Then uh, yep, one and two, and then uh, use 
screwdriver to hand tighten it so they won't break the plastic. Next would be to remove this panel underneath. So it's mounted by two screw, one and two. And then try to push it left and right. Use a knife okay, to remove the acrylic glue first. Okay, it's a stick Can't open using acrylic, acrylic glue to prevent glue. water from uh, seeping through the gap. Remove the, I mean, cut open the uh, acrylic glue and then uh, push it on the side. Okay, push it on the left and right. Unfortunately, the door blocks it, so I'm going to remove the door. And this is how it looks like underneath it. So, most probably, I would drill a hole over the edge, the other side, behind the holder. Luckily, I open up. Look, I don't drill a hole directly, I might drill onto the holder. Then I lay, label the wire. This is a switch. Which one is a switch? Which one are meant for the alternate current goes into the driver and comes out direct current. So make sure you label it accordingly. Uh, alternate current is uh, represented by the brown color on the left, AC240. And then the blue represents the neutral. So you can use, uh, yeah, this is how it looks like. L is live using a brown wire. Then I use a screwdriver to secure it. Once I'm done securing it, then uh, blue are meant for neutral. So this one is a return from a switch. All right, then I push it in, and screw it, tighten it, hand tighten it. Not too tight until it breaks the copper wire. Right, this is how it looks like. And then uh, this is for the direct current output from the driver. Blue represents neutral. Brown represents live. I'm going to make sure the polarity is correct. Safety first, next, switch off the main. And then I'm going to connect the uh, AC240 into the main. Here, I'm going to connect it. And uh, let's test it out. See if it works. So 240 goes in. To the switch and then AC uh, DC out. Yes, it works. Release the switch, it works. First time watching a video, can I subscribe to my channel? I appreciate a thumbs up, press on the bell button two times so that you get notified of my new video. Until then, see you bye.